down here in the bottom right, in the red, he is Maru! And his opponent in the upper left, in the blue, from China, he is Oliveira! So we've got the two players scouting each other out right now. Nothing too crazy so far as far as, as far as builds. We didn't have any proxies. We didn't have any super greedy expansion plays. But for now, we're just going to see both players tech up to the factory. That's right. A quicker reactor here for Maru. So going to give a little boost to his production while Oliveira just continues to make Reapers one at a time. Command centers on the way at exactly the same time as well. Very, very similar builds, but not 100% the same. We do have a Raven for Oliveira about halfway to completion here. Pretty standard uh, stuff as the medevac is going to pick up for Maru. Headed northbound Ooh. over here. Meanwhile, the rest of his forces are going to be probably coming out to the ramp uh, over at the entrance, uh, <gasps> Oliveira's base. There's a blind, or I should say there was a blind spot up in wow. the main, but he's going to go over here. He will be able to see that. Uh, it looks like the intentions here are for Maru to try to elevate our units up into the main like this. He does get the tank now uh, up inside the medevac and then dropped off over here within range of the starport. Ooh, this is going to be tough to break. Does he wait for a Raven spell? He sieges up a tank here. Oliveira starting to take a bit of damage on his buildings. Maru going around the outside of his base. So far, so good here for Maru. He's splitting pretty nicely. This tank is still alive. Time may be falling apart already. Oh man, Maru getting the kill on the Siege Tank as well as a lot of units, healing up a lot with this medevac as well. Maru's first attack looking so strong. And auto turret's gonna go down here as the SCVs are pulled. The tank goes down, the Hellions now being pushed up against the wall, but it's still so much damage. Eight SCVs have been taken out so far. This is an incredible amount of damage put on from Maru to kill that many SCVs. He is way up in workers, plus 10 in that regard. There are are some things going for Olivier, like he has a couple Ravens, but this attack isn't even done yet. This is not supposed to do this much damage already. More SCVs are going down. The tank and the Marine are going to come in here and try to chase this out, but the workers keep getting picked off. Oh, man, and already GG is called. Looks like Maru does want to do a double barracks proxy opener. So he is sending out two early SCVs, going to make a couple barracks, is this going to be Reaper? I mean, we have seen some craziness like proxy Marauder builds from, from Hero Marine, but I bet you this will just be a lot of Reaper pressure. Well, right now, Maru is waiting for that second Reaper. You never go in with the first one because it gives away what you're doing. You need that second one in case your opponent has a Reaper as well. So here comes Maru's second Reaper. It's time to jump up there, but the Reapers are only halfway done for Oliveira right now. He's going to come in here. He can maybe deny. No, he does not deny the factory from finishing, but he gets that first SCV. Uh, looks like the second SCV is going to be killed. He comes in, but he can't quite reach those Reapers. A third SCV is going to be dropped, as this is getting so bad for Oliveira. It really, really is. The Reapers are popping out. So he has two now against three, which is a little bit better, but taking a lot of damage on his SCVs. Five falling already. He's going to have some more Reapers coming up. The Hellion is going to come out and greatly help with this attack. He does manage to escape and only drops one. The regen's going to kick in momentarily, and those Reapers are soon going to heal. So right now, it's 21 SCVs against 18. So it's a 3 to 4 SCV advantage for Maru. That's pretty significant, but Oliveira already has his command center doing pretty well. well. That SCV does get picked off. Can Oliveira cover his main and get that command center built? This is quite the dilemma because with the command center uh, being made, oh, he's going to actually come out here and Whoa. chase this. This is a pretty crazy move here by Oliveira. Uh, is this actually an overextension? He's going to retreat back over here to where the rest of the barracks are. He needs a few more Reapers if he's going to take the fight. That was a wild move because it, of course, would be possible for Maru to just run up into the main and start killing everything up there. So, yeah, it's definitely a possibility, but it looks like Oliveira going to guard that area uh, for now and it did push him back. All right, I mean, if you're going to push him back and get your command center done, I guess we have to give it to him. It was a good move. Maru has one of his own. He's going to go ahead and do a seven Reaper drop as if that's something very common, but yeah, that's going to be kind of cool. This is a huge attack coming from Oliveira, though, and with Maru having a lot of units across the map, he's going to take a lot of damage. Look at this. Right now, running up that ramp, he's got to close that oh. deep wall. Oh, it doesn't work. He gets up. There are double Cyclones here, though. Oh, but he manages to lock the rest of the units up inside the main, but there's so many. The Cyclone looks like it might be taken out. He's kiting it so well so far. Oh, my gosh. And 
in that picture in picture right now you see that maru as well getting a ton of damage with his reapers picking off tech units as well the siege tank and marines of Oliveira breaking through the wall this is insane damage on both sides we can see Oliveira right now uh, continuing to get right into the heart of Maru's base. He's got a Banshee out. He's repaired the Cyclones. But uh, does he have enough to actually take this on? Yeah, hard to say. The Cyclones come up and try oh. to snipe that medevac. They just barely don't get it. The Banshee trying to get some damage on the very few Marines that act as anti-air here. They don't quite get it. A lock-on from that Cyclone backs up, but gets targeted down. Maru taps out. GG! <laughs> So Maro this time around, um, you know, going with a very, very different opening. He did try his proxy. Um, I think, you know, with Oliveira having that unique handling of actually barreling down the ramp and trying to take a fight uh, and forcing the barracks to lift off, Maro doesn't seem to be interested in trying that again this yeah. time around. Um, but, you know, the thing about Maro that is so scary is that he has by far some of the best rushes out of all the players in all three of the races, mm -hmm. but he also has maybe the best end game ever. <laughs> you know? You're right about that. Yeah, yeah. Positionally, he's number one. Macro-wise, he's number one. Well, I mean, everyone saw he has the highest rated player card. Overall, the pros respect him more than everybody as far as his base skills go. Okay, guns that down. Uh, we've got the medevac inbound here as a third command center is being uh, processed here for Oliveira. Um, we have to watch right now and see what production decisions are going to be made here from Maru. But if he starts to make more barracks, um, this would be a game where Oliveira is going to be expanding and Maru will have yeah. an opportunity to attack in and maybe do some damage. Well, Maru actually boosting into the main base here, and he is going to go ahead and drop a mine out immediately. Uh, burrows that mine, unburrows for a moment, lets it tank a little bit of damage, and we'll see what he lets it target. Oh, it actually hits that SCB, I think. Not so good. Oliveira cleaning that drop up beautifully. Yeah, Maru had some pretty crafty micro work there, but ultimately, Oliveira just smashed that attack, and... You know, whenever you have a drop like that, if it doesn't do any damage at all, then it completely backfired. And even the medevac was picked off, that's huge. That is that is really gigantic. Like, the, the fact that he lost three units total this game is pretty crazy. Oliveira having just perfect defense. Sables. Yeah. We may see him try to bust in here. All right, he scans. He sees the placement of three siege tanks, decides to go in a different direction. Oh, my gosh. He's splitting his entire oh. army. He is getting ready, possibly, for a bust. He has to scan. He's going to come oh. in here. There's a counterattack here from Morrow. It's going to be hitting all these SCVs. Meanwhile, Morrow retreats. He's going to lift the command center. The tanks are running back. The disables come down. Wow, that's two huge disables. And Oliveira going to town with his Marines stimming forward so strongly into Morrow's position. He's going to take out the Marines. He's going to take out the tanks as well. He's going to keep moving forward here. Morrow's going to be in a lot of trouble, Artosis. He really is. His third has been pushed away. Oliveira getting into the natural and now Maru with a drop into the main base he already eliminated that third base mining situation and now pick off a lot of SCVs but Oliveira has enough to push him out and some of the production facilities right now are down over this area two barracks with reactors on them as Marines get gunned down as they come out oh man Maru still with so few Marines trying to get some damage done here and Oliveira has lost a lot of SCVs but at the same time Oliveira pummeling this natural expansion that one siege tank being repaired beautifully and he does have to pull back a bit but his siege tanks still shelling this base combat shields about to finish Maru has to get rid of this push the tanks continue to shell the command center oh he lifts it up Maru right now only mining on one base taking so much damage Oliveira up 30 supply this is just unreal. Meanwhile, it looks like the third command center for Oliveira has been landed. Maru gonna go for a Hail Mary play, a huge counterattack across the map. <gasps> He's got two medevacs full of units coming out now. Oliveira decides to back up and regroup. Oh no, excuse me, he's gonna push back up. This is such a chaotic game. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is really interesting. Oliveira actually pulled very, very far back here and then went back up a little bit. So it seems like he knows something's happening. A scan goes down from Maru, decides better of dropping off in the natural, instead boosting into that main base. He needs to get some damage done here. He's gonna try to unload over here. I don't think there's enough Marines for Oliveira. He's gonna stim, he's gonna try to come in. 
Uh, the SUVs are being mowed down. It looks like there might just barely be enough Marines here. He's going to pull the SUVs as well. Maru picks up and is chased out. All right, he got six SCVs there, but still a pretty good lead for Oliveira. Oliveira re-maneuvering his siege tanks here, but Maru brings the Liberator, a key unit from Katowice this week in Terran versus Terran, and he will push those back. All right, the Marines are going to come stim in here. He is going to be able to target down that tank, uh, and it just barely is killed in the nick of time, but... You know, things are not getting better right now for Maru. Uh, Oliveira is actually uh, continuing to shell into this main base. Yeah, he's trying to get a lot of damage, but really that Liberator is being a hero unit. A lot of the Marines die for Oliveira. Now Maru coming up with the rest of his units into the main base and finally ends Oliveira's attack. But after all of this, Oliveira is up 14 SCVs. He's up a good 30 supply and still has that strong advantage with 2-2, two, two, almost done. Maru is now going to try to push out. This is pretty crazy. I think he's his his game plan is basically that Oliveira is, is desperate to finish the game. And so what he wants to do is basically go for a counterattack. But, I mean, this is a mammoth army here for Oliveira. He has so much. Can you afford to have some of your army out on the map as Maru right now? I think you can't afford not to, Tasis. He has to make something happen. He's so far behind Oliveira, though, with the counterattack. Very quickly kills the third base. Maru going to try to do the same. He's going under this command center. I don't see any way that he can save that. Meanwhile, Oliveira's going to come in here. He takes out the tank. He's going to dive into the natural. Oh, my God. He has so many Marines here stimming with those. 2-2 two, two upgrades, down goes that command center as well. GG, Oliveira takes the lead, 2-1. to one. Um, So we have Oliveira now out on the map. He's positioned so that he has three Reapers over here, um, just to the right of Morrow's main base, and a heli in the spot at the bottom. Uh, this doesn't mean he's going to try to attack in here, but it could simply be to try to catch any units that might move out. We've got the first medevac. Is this going to be a drop? It is. And look at this, a tank... Reapers moving out, Marines inside the medevac. Ooh, Oliveira actually catches those Reapers, so he knows something is going on, and it's actually a very similar attack to what we saw in game number one here from Maru. He's bringing the tank, he's bringing the Marines, but some of his units got caught on the way there. So let's see if Oliveira has time to stop this. He goes ahead, gets a lock on, on this medevac. If he kills the medevac, it is huge, and the medevac goes down immediately. And that means the tank and the Marines are isolated over here. He Gets it down. Oh my god, in the meantime, his own Reapers in the main base getting some damage there as well. <laughs> Mara with a <laughs> smirk on his face because Oliveira not only shuts down his attack, but gets more damage with less units on the other side it, of the map. It's doubly bad right now for Mara. <laughs> Losing workers. The rush was shut down, and Medivac now out of the picture. <laughs> but it seems like he's going to double down. It's actually very interesting having Mara show. Uh, emotion on his face. Yeah, uh, but you know, Maru's actually, I think what Maru's doing here is very, very intelligent. Okay, so he went third command center right away, and he's going mostly Vikings and tanks. He slowed down his own stim, he's slowing down marine production, and he's just going to try to get these units that scale very well. The longer the game gets, the better Vikings and siege tanks are, and he's just going to try to get there, but Oliveira is coming in. He might be going for a kill move. All right, he's going to come in here, probably try to disable any tank he can. Uh, he saves it, actually. He's got another disable oh already. God. The Vikings are going to be shot down. He throws down some auto turrets here in a tank. Are right, those auto turrets going to have been enough? Sieges up. There was a disable there. One of his tanks lands his own Vikings, and GG Oliveira is up three to one. <laughs> it looks like Morrow's just going to go for a 1 1 1, just about to finish up his starport as the factory's producing Hellions and the barracks is producing Marines. Um, Maro is going to just take a peek up here with the Reaper. Oliveira is ready to swat that away. Mm -hmm. This is really interesting. You don't normally see Maro stick with the same build uh, unless it's, you know, proxy racks a couple of games in a yeah, row. Yeah, sure, um, sure. So I guess he wants to try to hit the main. Okay, but you see Oliveira is already ready. He's got mm. a siege tank up there. Not just a siege tank, a Viking Tasteless to help push away that medevac. And as Maro sees it, he boosts out of there. But look, he didn't lose a lot of units. He no, lost no. like a Reaper, so it's not the end of the world what just happened there. This is fine. This is totally fine because he manages to keep the medevac alive. It's still, it can be used later on. A Raven's being made. He might try to incorporate that with the next little jab sure. in. Yeah, Maru is bringing all of his units to the front there once again. 
Going to siege up on this bunker. So, you know, that's a little bit annoying for Oliver. He's going to go ahead, unload the bunker. Maybe he'll sell it as well. Uh, but Maru, like, are you going to get real damage right there? I don't think so. He's just, he's rotating around. He's trying to apply some pressure here to his opponent. And one thing to note is that, you know, that might have looked kind of like a little, like a bit of a weird skirmish, like he sieged up, shot the bunker, and backed up. He's actually taken a third base. Oliveira unseages again. Maru looks like he's going to try to set up a line of defense over here. Oliveira doesn't have to try to come in, but it looks like he might try to tiptoe these tanks forward. Yeah, it sets up a little siege right here. That's going to be a little bit annoying. It looks like he's hitting the command center uh, when he does get vision of it, right? So the tanks can shoot a little bit further than, th than they can see, which is an important thing to keep in mind. That's why Vikings become so powerful. That Raven takes quite a bit of damage. Oliveira unseaging, deciding to go for He throws down the auto turrets. I don't know if this is going to end up working, but he does go forward. Maru pulling his SCVs, going forward with those Marines immediately. And will Oliveira actually be able to hold this position? Yeah, the target firing there from Maru was just too good. He, he realized what's happening with the auto turrets and just target fired over the top. But you know what? These tanks are starting to get a little bit lower here, Artosis. Yeah, Oliveira landing those Vikings down. They do deal a lot of damage to sea tanks, but somehow Maru keeps three tanks at very low health alive. That is a net win to Maru, I would say. Oh, huge win there. Had he lost the tanks, it would have been more of a trade. But good juggling there with the medevacs. Well, right now, Maru deciding it's time to move out across the map. He probably is feeling pretty good about his position right now. He's been mining from that third base a little bit longer than Oliveira has had his. He's got those siege tanks as well that stayed alive during the fight. So here we go. He's going to move up. He scans. No tanks here. This is a problem for Oliveira. Yeah, Oliveira is looking pretty weak right now. The bunker is taken out. I see one siege tank on the low ground, and that's not going to be there for very long. Oh, man. Actually, Maru kind of overcommits with his Marines there, I want to say. that Diving in on those tanks, he did deal a lot of damage to them, but he didn't quite kill them off. He lost a lot of Marines, and I think he has to back up. Looks like Maru's going to come around here and try to hit over here at the third. He's going to stim in now. I see three siege Ooh. tanks here for Oliveira. Let's see what Maru can get done. He targets one of them down immediately. Oh, my gosh. Stimming forward here. He gets another one. He will have to pull back the rest of his Marines here. A lot of them end up dying. Oliveira going with a counterattack towards that third base. Maru sees it coming, and he lifts off. He's trying to run out, but a lot of SCVs going down. He's taken out so many. He's now going to try to fight those Marines, and he does manage to take them out as well. A big interruption Ooh. here for the Income of Maru. Oh, Maru comes down with his SCVs to fight with some Marines as well. Vikings pushing back the medevac, but loses quite a few SCVs. He does drop down below Oliveira's economy for now. The tanks are now going to be pulled back. A uh, big victory there for a very small attack from Oliveira. 16 SCVs have been killed. Yeah. Oh, man. This game definitely a lot closer than the others, though. Maru right now setting up that fourth base location with a planetary so that it's going to be able to defend itself a little bit. Now we're watching the first person view here of Maru spreading out his siege tanks, sieging them up, trying to keep an eye on anywhere that Oliveira could attack him. There is a blind spot for both players here in the middle of the map. It looks like Oliveira may end up having an encounter here with Maru, stimming and coming in, but a flank over here on the side from Maru. Reinforcements for Oliveira coming down the ramp. Yeah, Oliveira stimming up. He has a ton of Marines here, and in fact, he will start to beat the Marines, but the siege tanks adding so much firepower here. Oliveira loses a lot of Marines, but so does Maru. Quite the exchange there. Maru decides to go back and lick his wounds. Some more tanks are going to unseage over here as well. Oliveira, yeah, unsure of where to go now. He, uh, he certainly doesn't want to try to push in any further. Uh, I think that would have been a pretty egregious overextension. One thing I do want to mention, Oliveira actually getting his 3-3 Marine upgrades before Maru does. So that's something that will, you know, help him out quite a bit when he gets them. If you're up in upgrades, your Marines will fight far, far better. But, of course, siege tanks going to be a key element of those attacks as well. Both sides are doing a great job with keeping up with their tech. Upgrades are getting pretty crazy. The tank count overall is actually a lot better for Maru. Um, now, that being said, you know, tanks are, are pretty brittle versus Marines if they ever get, uh, you know, exposed in a spot mm -hmm. um, where the Marines can gun them down. So 
if Oliveira is going to try to, you know, come out ahead, we want to watch and see if he can get any good tank snipes. That being said, it looks like Maru is actually <laughs> gearing up for a push. Yeah. Trying to come up and hit this base over here right now. That's really scary. That's a huge army from Maru. He is up in army supply by about 20 right now. And Oliveira has a little group of Marines to the sides. That is not going to be too useful in this fight right now. Yeah, he's not. Oh, I see what he's doing. He's going to unseat these tanks over here. He's going to go around up onto the high ground and start to shell this base. Now we can see these Marines over here in the picture in picture. They do take out this command center. Yeah, but Maru is shelling a lot over here as well. Oliveira, though, clearing those tanks with a double medevac drop. Very well done on defense. And suddenly, the game looks pretty even. Yeah. Um,. You know, it is a funny thing. Sometimes the much smaller counterattack does way more damage than the, than the big heavy push. Mm -hmm. And that was one of those moments. Um, I, I think Maru lost a decent amount of tanks. Is it possible that the tank count is actually ahead here for Oliveira? It is 10 Ooh. to 6. He is in the lead. That's that is huge. a big deal. That is a big deal. Six tanks will still do a good job defensively. And they're going to have to because Oliveira looks to be getting ready to attack. He's coming down. Maru backs up down a ramp that is a very choked off area so it would be hard for Oliveira to attack there okay he's going to try to come up onto the high ground he scans again and Oliveira I think is being pretty smart he doesn't want to be in a position where he can ever uh overextend so he backs up and Maro also pulls <laughs> away as well I think wisely so yeah, there is a lot of heavy army movement right now around the map. If you lose track of where your opponent's Marines and tanks are, you can die very, very quickly. That's why we're seeing these scans over and over, just double checking. Are you sitting there sieged? Are you moving around? Which direction are you going into? These are incredibly important things that they must keep track of. Okay, he scans over here. And this is going to be a hard position to push into, Artosis. He does gun down the first Viking. Um, we have some great armor shreds going down. The Vikings going to town on each other. But right now, Oliveira does have more. Bringing forward those very important liberators we were talking about. He's going to force some of these tanks to unsiege and move back. Yeah, between the tanks and the Liberators, he can start to leapfrog forward here and try to crack open this position for Marlo. We're seeing a lot of tanks get gunned down, Artosis. We really are. The Liberators so great at breaking these positions. Still, he has to keep more Vikings. The Viking count very close on both sides. Maru trying to hold on right now as Oliveira tries to push forward, kills another tank with the Liberators, going after another one as well. The tanks continue to come down. It seems to be working. I think Maru's going to lose his base. More Marines come in here, and they stem to break in. Oh, he's going to be able to pick that off so quickly. An armor strike goes down on his Marines, but he continues to fight, chasing Maru back. One base goes down, but Maru has so many more. He's now expanding over into the very far bottom right. He has 6 o'clock, as we can see over here. Um, where does he try to go? Maro has to try to remake his tanks. He has to get some kind of unit composition to address the threats that Oliveira is creating. Maru only has two tanks right now, Tasis, and only two factories. This is a terrible situation. He must keep those tanks alive. Oliveira continues to push him back, controlling the pace of this game. He's going to try to come in again. He does gun down some of those Vikings. The Vikings trying to pick off the um, medevacs if they can. There's a planetary here. SCDs can repair, but they need to stay behind. Yeah, this is really rough, though. With that many siege tanks, he's going to lose the planetary as well. Maru massing up outside of his natural. He's lost control of these two bases. That's very painful, but he's still got a lot of supply. He's got a lot of SCVs. He's got a big army. He still has a chance in this game. Maro's going to try to come down and engage with this army that's over here. A big pickup. He's going to go into the main. He's going to dive on the infrastructure. Meanwhile, Maro does get the disables in, inches in with the tanks, and starts to pick off the position Oliveira has. Oh, I love this drop from Oliveira, though. Nothing in here for Maro. He does bring up a couple siege tanks, but a lot of his reactors getting picked off, and then Oliveira gets out of the area. <laughs> He's just hurting the production of Maro. The SCVs that fled the 6 o'clock position are now mining over here in the very far bottom right, but this base is going to go down as well. Oliveira continuing to grow. He's actually expanded just one screenshot north of where we were a second ago. Oh my gosh, yeah, Oliveira getting more bases at this point, still controlling the map, 
still shelling down Maru bases. I think right now he feels it. He's getting closer and closer to being the world champion. Yeah, the command center's getting so low. A big push here in the middle of the map. Maru trying to fight back. I don't see very Marines to defend. I think oh. Maru might be able to break into this position. You might be right about that. Oh, but it looks like Oliveira coming back at the side with his army. Gets a great arm <laughs> armor shred off. And here we go. Disables on all these tanks. Maru breaking through. He's coming through. He's just destroying this position right on top of these starports. Another siege tank comes up. Morrow's going to have to try to move his tanks in a little bit further. But if he missteps, Oliveira can dive in and take those all out. That's right. Look at these Vikings of Oliveira. He's trying to fight right now. And in fact, he does have more Vikings. The armor strike goes down, but I don't know that that will be enough. I think he's going to win this air battle. And Maru may have to flee once again. Yeah, I think even with the weakened Vikings, you just have too many. It's just a game of math right now. And without those Vikings, uh, you know, it's very hard to spot for your own tanks. Not just that, as soon as he won the Viking battle, four more Liberators. He's going to use those to push those tanks back. But in the meantime, Maru rotating his army to the side will kill off another base. He tries to come in and dive on that tank, but there's too many Marines. He might be able to protect it. More tanks coming up right now here for Oliveira. Oh, some great disables go down. Picks off a couple more siege tanks as well. The Liberators come forward, but Maru so quick with his unsiege, backing up. And now he's going to do to Oliveira what Oliveira did to him. He can pick off even more bases. Yeah, I mean, there's just so much of the map that Oliveira has right now. He actually didn't know that base was taken, Tasos. Oh he could have killed that. He doesn't even realize how behind he is right now. Oh, no. Bad news for Maru. Yeah, he doesn't know about this base over here in the bottom right as well. Well, he's going to go somewhere. Let's see if he checks. He stims some Marines up. He sees the planetary. This is certainly something that Maru can attack. Yeah. Oliveira is going to go for a counterattack here. You know, when you're ahead uh, in bases, sometimes the counterattack with everything can be a little bit stronger because the person who's doing the initial attack just has more mm. locations they have to try to wipe out. Yeah, that does occur. Oh, <laughs> a quick pickoff right there from Oliveira. He's doing a massive counterattack. He's going He's to the main. main base. He's going to go in here and kill all the factories and barracks. This is really bad news for Maru as these tanks come up for Oliveira. He sets up some beautiful Liberators as well, saying, no, you can't siege there. Maru has to walk all the way around, but is this breakable? He has all the tanks disabled here. The Marines are going to come down and fight. They're all going to get thinned out. And now the tanks get destroyed in an insane oh, moment. Oh, 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 that is perhaps the best break I have ever seen from an invincible position. Maru making some magic, keeping himself in the game, but just barely so. Now Maru's supply is way down right now. Uh, uh, Oliveira basically lost his main army. He's really hurting. Um, but again, the income is so high, he can start to try to remake that. But Artosis, I'm blown away the, at the skill that Maro exhibited there. I thought that was going to be the neck-breaking yes, move yes. to get in the main with those siege tanks, but he handled it perfectly. I don't think anyone else in the world could have lived through that. That yeah. was the most beautiful positional play I've ever seen. But Oliveira uh, continues to have an advantage, way, way more supply. Maru moving up through the map. It's hard to even keep track of how many bases they have at this point. There are command centers going up and going down everywhere as these two just pummel each other. It looks like already Oliveira has managed to remake most of his army. The tank count is certainly going to be lower, though. And so we're going to need to see, you know, how he tries to handle this. For the time being, though, um, it looks like... Uh, you know, Maru growing into the bottom center. He's looking pretty healthy. Oliveira's actually taken the very upper left corner. Uh, I feel like I don't even remember when that base was taken out, but now, <laughs> now he's got it. So yeah. they, they traded spots. There's actually been so much action happening on the map. Yeah, a lot of back and forth with these expansions. The Liberator's being used for some harassment as well. Maru is going to clean that up. Uh, and Maru is really focusing very, very heavily on this Raven production. His Raven spellcasting is going to be so key, both in defense and in breaking other locations. Oliveira. <gasps> oh, Hold oh, on, those tanks, they went the wrong way, and Oliveira instantly jumps on them. Oh my god, they're trying to get back, but they can't, and so many are picked off. Siege mode is up. Does he have enough? Medivac's covering most of this fight. It's hard to say even what's going on here, but Oliveira! Takes it! Oliveira is the world champion! Katowice, give it up for Oliveira! He is your Intel Extreme Masters!
World Champion! So I want to thank, uh, thank you for everyone. Like you guys show me, the StarCraft 2 is not that game. <laughs> I mean, there's so many people. There's so many people to watch. And I complete my dream. I mean, even I still feel not truth. <laughs> but I want, to see my, I want to see my family and use English and use Chinese. And I want to see, uh, use, Chinese, uh, use English first. I want to thank my dad. Like, like last time, I lose ESL Atlanta, like zero three, uh, like zero six, like no one win, uh, like like no one give one. And my father just tell me, don't give up, like you are always the best player in my in my heart. And yeah, and I want to see you guys. Thank you so much for watching. My uh, my English is not very well, but uh, thank you so much. And I want to say some Chinese. I want to say some Chinese to my Chinese fans, I, because now uh, so, so many Chinese people are still watching. It's already 5 a.m. I think so. Oh, I want to say to the viewers who are still watching, that there is no such thing as impossible. I have won the world title. There is no such thing as impossible. <笑>我觉得我等到这个世界冠军太久了我去年去年真的很难我上次零零六输的时候我觉得心里都骂对我来说已经结束了但是从上一次我一直谈我告诉我自己我可以再多练习我可以再多练习如果有一天真的拿到